Doc Livingston was a 1951 graduate who touched thousands with his gift of composing and performing and teaching amazing music. And I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but the music we enjoyed during lunch was Doc Livingston from one, one, or one or more of his CDs, and of which there are many of those. But we enjoyed his music during lunch. Doc, as he is famously known, retired as a music professor and director of bands for WKU in 1990. He continued for many years to grace us with his special music and classical performances, and today we're proud to give something back to Doc and say thanks. Thanks for all the joy you've given to so many throughout your life. So if you'll please direct your attention uh, to the video boards on either side of the room, we will honor the life and contributions of Dr. David Doc Livingston. A gifted musician, composer, and teacher, known for his wry sense of humor and signature chuckle, David Doc Livingston is one of the most talented musicians to grace Kentucky's musical landscape. With a career spanning more than half a century, Livingston's legacy is a soulful symphony. If every person he touched were a, a note or an emotion or a phrase or a melody, it would be the most amazing symphony you'd ever hear. Born to a musical family in London, Kentucky, Livingston arranged and played music in clubs and on the radio from the age of 15. After high school, he joined the Army Infantry, but was later transferred to the 4th Air Corps Band in California to play jazz saxophone. In 1951, he received a Bachelor of Science degree from Western, his Master's degree from University of Kentucky, and completed his doctoral degree at Ohio State University in 1971. He spent 18 years as a teacher and band director in Kentucky's public schools, including the honor of becoming the first band director at Franklin County High School. He was a marvelous jazz musician. Uh, he played excellent piano. Um, he played all the reeds, particularly clarinet, uh, saxophone, his old saxophone family. I remember one summer uh, when we were teaching in the same system, uh, he, had, he was teaching private lessons in a little temporary classroom. And I came by to see him, and he had two tape recorders set up. And he'd gotten out some saxophone quartet music, and he had an alto, a tenor, and a baritone sax. And he would record the first alto part, uh, and then he would play that back and play and, and record on the other player uh, the second alto part and so forth until he had the whole quartet. The sound quality was atrocious because it was just a couple of little web core tape recorders. But he was doing this just to amuse himself. I used to go to the the Royal Music Band Director's Reading Session. And we always went out for a jam session with people playing to a club one night over the Saturday or Sunday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday weekend. One time, one year, we went to a place and the piano was so old that it was a half step flat. Dave Livingston, of course, was playing piano because nobody else would. We did all the tunes in he transposed them all one half step up because the piano was a half step flat. He played them just like he's always known them and, and just, he was amazing. The most talented man I ever knew. You know what? Who is this guy? Who is this? Because my first year was 1965 and I think that was his first year as band director in, uh, at, at Western. And so I knew him as a band director, but that's about all. And I come to find out that Dr. Livingston had played with Louis Armstrong, that he uh, you know, played with very, uh, Dave Brubeck. He sat down at the piano that day as um, um, Dr. David Livingston, but when he, when he got up from the piano, he was just Doc. A noted composer, Doc Livingston served as director of bands at WKU and taught courses in theory, composition, and woodwinds until his retirement in 1990. He completed USO tours around the world serving with the Gemini Dance Band. A member of the Billy Vaughn Hollywood Orchestra, Doc made two overseas tours with the group and, over his career, performed with the likes of Louis Armstrong, Dave Brubeck, and Rosemary Clooney. 
He has composed scores of original music and been honored with the Governor's Award for Art in Instrumental Music, inducted into the WKU Music Hall of Fame, and the band room at Franklin County High School is named in his honor. Doc and his wife Joyce have been married for 62 years, and their musical legacy lives on in their two children, three granddaughters, and nine great-grandchildren. He was unique, and uh, uh, but you do meet people like that, and uh, it's a very small, uh, small business, we'll call it, uh, the idea of teaching kids instrumental music at the uh, early levels, uh, and teaching teachers how to teach, which was his forte, uh, based on his experience. Uh, uh, he was he was unique. I can't uh, can't describe it any other way. He could do it all. Uh, marvelous composer, uh, arranger, uh, uh, performer, jazz piano. Uh, I don't know about his legitimate piano playing. <laughs> I don't think I ever heard him play anything le legitimate. But uh, marvelous uh, reed player, clarinet, saxophone. Just uh, just an all around amazing guy. David. Thanks so much for all of your input through the years, not only academically, but your friendship. And, and I say thank you, Doctor. No, I, I say thank you, Doc. 2014 WKU Hall of Distinguished Alumni inductee David Doc Livingston. On behalf of our family and friends, we want to thank you, Dr. Ranstell and the Alumni Committee for bestowing this great honor on our dad, father-in-law, grandfather, great-grandfather, and friend, Dr. David Livingston. I would like to introduce my table, my brother Tim. He is an, a WKU alum. My daughter Hannah, she's a WKU alum. Our three, grand, three of our nine grandchildren. <laughs> uh, this is Ivan, Caleb, and Grace. Uh, music faculty at WKU, Marshall Scott, who is one of the very few that speaks my dad's language. And that, that means a lot. And Nancy Crone, you saw the Gemini uh, all girls dance band, except Lauren Al Harris was not a girl. but. She was in one of his first uh, Gemini groups, and it's appropriate to have her here. She's been a big part of our family story. How do you describe a man like, uh, like David Livingston without mentioning music? It can't be done, but I'm going to try to give some background. That was a beautiful video. I hadn't seen that. Our dad came from parents who were educated, but they were not particularly musical. He grew up in eastern Kentucky among the coal mines. His mother was a former teacher and his father had several careers. Railroad engineer for l &N Railroad, a Methodist minister, and mayor of a small town in Harlan, Kentucky. Harlan County, Kentucky. The fact that our dad's a musical genius is a gift from God. He grew up during the, the Great Depression and was not provided with all the musical opportunities that people have today. He grew up listening to recordings of Benny Goodman and he memorized them. He memorized everything that Benny Goodman had ever recorded, and that's not an exaggeration. He played all of them on clarinet. There was a, a piano in their home, and he was self-taught. That's why he never knew any classical music. <laughs> he taught himself, but he did a pretty good job. His high school band director, Reed Hoskins, drove him all the way from Harlan County to Western after Dad finished his military service to try for a clarinet scholarship. When they got it here to WKU, they were told that all the clarinet scholarships had already been given out. What Western needed at that time were bassoons. A few days later, Daddy and Reed came back with a bassoon, and he got a full scholarship on bassoon. <laughs> it didn't take long, though, for the music faculty to recognize his great talent on piano, clarinet, sax, jazz improvisation, and composition. After college, our dad went to UK for graduate school where he met our mom, who was a senior music major. And now, that, that was old for information, it was 63 years ago. He, their anniversary was October 5th. He was at a crossroads career-wise. 
deciding whether to teach or go pro like many of his military buddies with whom he had played while being stationed in California. Some of them were joining professional jazz bands, and some of his buddies joined the Lawrence Welk Show. Mom won his heart, though, and only three weeks after they first met, they eloped. Cecil Carrick, another musical legend in Bowling Green, drove my mom and dad to the courthouse, and he was their best man. Mom convinced Daddy to teach so they could work together and raise a family, and we're glad they did. He gave in, and they were the first choir and band directors at Franklin County High School in Frankfurt. Again, it was our mother who encouraged our dad to go for a PhD and teach at the university level. She knew him well. To be a high school band director takes a lot of physical energy, and that was not his forte, and pun intended. That's what he would have said. He took mom's advice, and we moved to Columbus, Ohio, where daddy pursued his doctorate at Ohio State. Mom immediately landed a teaching job in suburban Columbus and financially supported our family for the next two years. Now ready to teach again, finding a university job was not difficult. Dad had several offers but chose WKU hands down. He had enjoyed his undergraduate study here and he loved Bowling Green. And you know what a difference he made at WKU and surrounding areas from 1965 on. So what was Doc Livingston like at home? He's humble, funny, has simple tastes. He loves family, food, people, dogs, and trains. He loves astronomy. He loves caves. He never cared for TV much, but he loves a good joke. Honestly, though, it is difficult to talk to about him without mentioning the music. Most of his friends were and are musicians. Before he retired from WKU, Mom and Daddy bought a big western cedar home and named it Alpine Lodge. Here they ran a bed and breakfast for 15 years. During this time, he teamed up with his old friend Billy Vaughn, who had moved back to Bowling Green from Los Angeles, and together they made musical magic at a restaurant in Bowling Green called The Branding Iron. My brother Tim played bass with them, and they made several tours to Japan where big bands were very popular in the 80s. Daddy also had his own band and played many gigs with WKU music faculty Marshall Scott, John Sapola, and others. Today, life is different with our dad with his declining me mental state. He has trouble remembering most things, but can still sit down and play music like he was 20 years old. At various times, my daughters have visited him at Chandler Memory Center and have played instruments or sung with him, and it's a connection on a very deep level, beyond words. My brother Tim, my husband Mike, and I also play with him regularly, and though he forgets the name of, names of the tunes, he can follow in any key wherever we go with the music, both on the piano and on his clarinet. He is still truly amazing. David Livingston has always been an optimist. Every day when I would ask him how his day went, he would always say, I had a good day. And of course it wasn't always good. Our mom had two strokes and they've been through hard times recently in the hospital and now in separate homes for their specific care needs. Life is very complicated now, but God gives them and us the grace to take one day at a time. Two or three years ago, they would have been able to sit here and enjoy this celebration and understand what it means. But we'll take the DVD Barb has made, and it was wonderful, and we'll show it to them over and over and over. <laughs> so again, please accept our gratitude for bestowing this great honor on Dr. David Livingston, and please go visit him. He's at Chandler Memory Center, and he'll play you a tune. He has a piano in his room. And it might be the same tune over and over, but he will play, even if you don't ask. Thank you. <laughs>